larger tortoise. And let's see, do you guys know what it is just by looking at its rear end? <laughs> this is Camp Kennedy. Hey, what's going on? Good morning, everybody. Kenan here, hanging out, and uh, we got an unboxing video. So um, that's what we're doing, right, Kate? That's right. That's right. Kate's helping out. Uh, so this is another story of a tortoise, and I don't do this all the time, but this was a tortoise that someone needed a home for. So I uh, said, sure, because I, I keep this species. They're easy for me to keep here in South Florida. Um, so let's see. The big reveal. Ooh. Got a little bit of a sun shower going on here. So exciting. That's all right. Don't you love this? All <gasps> right. And they, of course, good old ship your reptiles, help them out. And uh, we got this animal shipped nice and safely. And <clears throat> I was able to, well, that didn't work so well now, did it? Slick. Yeah, I was trying to be all cool, like, you know, like. Oh, my God. What? You're going to get working. my foot. No, I won't get your foot. Let's yeah, try it again. Right. Oh, Look out, babe. Oh, God. Yeah, that's not All right, good. good. No, okay. one more time. Come on. Yeah, I got it. Okay. All well, right. I didn't want to do, you know, I ruined our deck. Thanks. Okay, anyway. Sorry, Aquascape. Yeah, no, it's okay. So anyway. I like, was happy to see that said non-venomous. Uh, of course. Of course, dear. So we got the heating pad, which if you feel, feel that bad. Still warm. Ooh. See? So they have a nice warm. little heating pad, which is nice, which is how you have to ship your animals when it is cool. Up, oh, and this is a larger tortoise. Up, oh, there was a little head there that I poked. It's a larger tortoise. Let's see, do you guys know what it is just by looking at its rear end? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, this is a uh, very special tortoise. So special. Yeah, it looks like this animal has been kept indoors most of its life. And gosh, this is a uh, animal that definitely had some metabolic bone disease. My goodness. And yeah, this is, uh, gosh, this is just incredible. Kind of uh, sad, to be perfectly honest. Um, this is just not how tortoises are supposed to look. Uh, this is also uh, why usually I don't take tortoises because, um, you know, they told me that this was an animal in good health and I'm sure it's okay. I'm sure it eats and does its thing. Hey, little guy. What's the deal with that? Why, well, what, why so does that here's, happen? So here's the scoop. This is, this is not a case of regular pyramiding. This is actually a case of metabolic bone disease. So this animal was kept in improper conditions, to be perfectly honest. Um, and it caused its shell to have a really deformed uh, growth pattern. Um, this, I wouldn't even say this is pyramiding. Uh, pyramiding is when you get a little bit of raised scoots. This is, I hate to say it, I, I don't like to hurt people's feelings, but this is gross negligence in the diet and the um, UVB lighting of this animal. Mm -hmm. uh, so what happens is, uh, because this animal, um, because this animal was fed an improper diet, uh, the shell grew weird, and if you look at it from this side, it's saddled. And this tortoise, in fact, let's go walk over to the Redfoots so I can show you what a proper tortoise looks like. Because this, you know what guys, it's turning into a teachable moment. And it's kind of shocking, you saw the shock on my face because I expected it to be a, um, you know, a properly grown redfoot tortoise. And again, this is why I don't take animals, but this person uh, was very sincere and really told me, um, you know, that the animal was in good shape. Now, when it comes to the animal, like, can, obviously you can't fix the shell. No, but not is at it, all. And is it healthy in other ways? Well, or like, is there? You know, it looks, it has bright eyes. There's no discharge from the nose. So yes, I would say this animal is okay in other ways, but I don't know if it got hit, nibbled by a dog here or something, uh, cause that's not how the shell's supposed to look. It looks like it was broken. Also, if you look at the tail, um, the tail's bent up and that could be, this animal may have been in like a very small enclosure. Mm. Um, and I'm just guessing, you know, again, you know, it's one of those things, I'm not trying to be a jerk. If the person who sent this animal to me sees this video, I'm not trying to be a jerk. But, um, you know, I don't normally take animals that are, uh, I mean, this animal is going to be fine. I'm sure it can walk fine. And we're going to get it in here with the other redfoot. So let me show you what a normal redfoot tortoise looks like. And I'll also show you what pyramiding looks like and what I believe is acceptable pyramiding. And here's a perfect example um, right here. So what we have 
We also have some we have breeding. Some yeah, we got baby some baby making going, going on. on. Here's a male redfoot. Look at how beautiful that shell is. You see, it's a domed shell. The males get this what we call wasping or a waste on their shell. You see how it gets narrow in there? Mm -hmm. So there's this dome shell. And look at the scoots. Uh, the, the segments of the shell are just completely smooth. Now, if you just pan over to your right, this is a female. And you'll notice she, her scoots are slightly raised. Now, that will occur in the wild, believe it or not. Now, again, we've talked about pyramiding. There are many possible reasons for it. No one knows exactly what causes this kind of pyramiding. It could be growing too quickly, too much food, uh, lack of humidity when young, um, you know, too high protein in the diet, something like that, okay? Now, when we add this little guy, to the mix, you can just see how completely deformed the shell is, okay? The saddleback, the really close spaced pyramiding. Um, let's see how this animal moves. I'm sure it's gonna have a strange kind of gait. If you notice, its legs are, are kind of splayed out. Um, because again, remember, tortoises' spines are attached to the top of their shell. Uh, the animal can move, which is fine. And uh, I, you know, he's gonna live out here with the good old, um, Redfoot tortoises, but that's not an animal that I would want to potentially breed because I'm not sure that it can develop proper eggs because of the fact that it's going to need a lot of calcium just to kind of correct as we move forward. It's going to need to have a better kind of um, diet. Which how, it'll get. how old is that? Or? That tortoise, it's tough to tell. That tortoise could be, it could be, I mean, judging by the size, if it were normally kept, that's probably a five or six year old animal. Okay. Um, and these I, ones over here? Oh, these ones old? here are, you know, over 10 years old. These are, these are old tortoises. And some of the larger ones that you see are going to be upwards of 20 years old. So it's really just a matter of doing the right thing um, and doing your research and keeping the animal in a proper way so that it doesn't develop. And to be perfectly honest, guys, it can be done up north you can do this it's it's going to take a little bit more um financial commitment because we remember these animals need space they need uvb they need the proper diet which means you're going to have to really work hard to get fresh foods to get the proper prepared foods um that these animals need in order to you know actually get them going and growing smoothly um, the reason I live down in Florida, I've said it millions and millions of times on the channel, is so I could keep these animals outside. Very, very important for me to keep these animals in as naturalistic a way as possible. Uh, you can see how friendly the redfoot tortoise are. They're incredible little species from South and Central America, mostly from South America. When I say Central America, I mean some of the islands in the Caribbean. You'll be able to find them. They were introduced uh, to some of the islands. Now, this animal's moving very quickly. Um, we're going to go ahead and leave it out here. Uh, being that it's a captive-born animal, I'm really not worried about any kind of diseases. Um, you know, it's been living, like I said, eyes are clear, nose is clear. Um, if you were concerned about spreading disease, you'd want to quarantine the animal. I'm really not concerned. This group has been made up of animals that were rescues, so they're all doing very well. There's about 25 redfoot tortoises in here, but this little one seems to be doing good. So I don't know, folks, why don't you leave a name for this little guy? Help me name this little hard luck case. He's going to have a nice, he, she actually is going to have a nice retirement down here at Camp Kennan. We're going to keep this little one as a teachable animal so that you folks know what good and bad pyramiding or acceptable pyramiding is. And then what happens when we don't feed our animals the right diet or keep them in the right way. I would guess this, this tortoise was fed a lot of dog food. Uh, which is extremely high in protein. And even though redfoots will sometimes go out and nibble on slugs and worms, uh, it's not something that they will eat all the time. Can I ask why you think it was fed dog food? Because of the, I've just seen in my experience over the years uh, with this type of metabolic bone disease, I can tell you this is just a telltale sign of a, a very bad diet. And what happens is a lot of people just, <clears throat> they just feed these animals whatever's laying around. Mm. And they don't realize that tortoises have evolved 
to have an extremely specific dietary plan, uh, a nutrient plan that they need to follow. They need to eat specific foods in order for them to grow. And the other cool thing about tortoises, look at as they chase us, hon. The other, <laughs> they're the coming other, to say hi to their they new They are friend. coming to say hi to their new buddy. They're the welcoming committee. Um, the other thing about tortoises is they survive off very low nutrient rich foods. I've said that so many times. So they've evolved in that way uh, to do that. So what happens is, when you start feeding a very high protein diet, you usually get that kind of shell uh, formation and deformation, really. Mm. So there you go. But it's moving around. Name it in the comments. There is a little lesson for you. This unboxing turned into a surprise for me. Um, but we're going to keep this little guy, keep him as an ambassador here at the camp. I hope you guys learned something today. Uh, it's, it's one of those topics that tortoise keepers uh, are always striving towards uh, being, look at this, there's the first interaction, hey buddy. So they're looking at their new enclosure mate, their new pal, and uh, let's uh, keep an eye on them and make sure things go smoothly for them. All right, everyone, thanks so much. Kenan saying goodbye for Kate and myself, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy learning. That's what we're all about here, guys. We're learning on the channel, so education plus conservation will well, equal infinity now, won't it? Because we'll be able to keep on going here on this planet. Yeah. So there you go, everybody. Love yous. Thanks for joining me. And don't worry, I'll love that little goofy tortoise as much as I can. Aw, it's goofy like you. That's me. So you get, you get first class treatment here, man. <laughs>